Hey everyone, it's Diane here from Deco Easy, the decoration channel of me and my mother-in-law Jenny. Thank you so much for joining in as this today. Are you ready for a new Christmas and July DIY? Then let's start crafting. So we started off this DIY in the garage today because I'm going to work with templates. These are just free printables from the internet and I'm going to transfer, uh, transfer them, just cut around like this. And then I'm going to draw around these templates upon this plaque of wood. Look what a beauty. This thing was just for free at Ikea. Just at a scrap wood uh, storage thing bin at the end uh, of the store, so near the exit. You can find free wood. So this is going to be our woodworking thing today. And this will be our template, so I'm going to cut these out, draw them around, and then uh, I'm going to Johnny to uh, let them be sawn out because I don't have a power saw and she has. So um, I think the next shot you will see is sawing and then I'll be back with the sawed out things. Well, here we are back with two of these really cute maison jars. Now, I want to decorate them both as a set, but then for Christmas, so I'm going to make each one different. Um, yeah, we have the lid. I'm going to paint that. Well, on the first one, I think I just take black. And then the other thing, I think I just take the uh, white color. Uh, and I also want one to cover in this foil, I think. Like this, or, you know, like that way. I think this way looks cute. Well, this way too. I don't know which one I'm going to pick. Um, so first cut this thing out. Um, yeah, I think making with this foil is the best thing to start off with. This is static foil from Action. Uh, and I have it for quite a while. I think it, the whole thing here costed 5 euros or something. Now let me measure how much I need. I'm going to use this section here. Or no, I'll look at the sister right section. Yeah, here because this is a straight line, this one as well. But then you have, um, you know, the stripes in a different angle. And I think this one looks more cute. So, um, so I want the stripe to be in the center. I think then we get on something like this. So I'm carefully going to cut this out. Well, let's say until here so then we can put the stripe in the center this can be put away this is really easy to apply if you have a small section larger things are harder okay now let me check where the center of this thing is therefore i'll be using my crafting mat because this stripe here well you can hardly see because there's so much paint and everything. Uh, this stripe here is the center, so I need to align this stripe with the center. And I think then we're there. Hey, this is it. No, just joking. This is access stuff that we can cut away easily. Um, first, I'm going to roughly cut out because I first want to see how everything sticks together. You can always cut up more if you want to, but maybe it's also a good idea to put it around the, the angle of the DOI. Maybe that gives a more luxurious look. We'll see how that turns out. This can be put away. Now, let's see if it is possible to carefully fold this around or not, or is this too small? Well, I think it will do. That gives the DIY a less, less sharper look. Only here, this angle here is difficult. Hope it holds. No, I don't think it's going to hold. Such a shame. No, that doesn't work. It starts flipping back. I think that is because this is pressed wood and the side doesn't really stick together that well. So I'm going to cut off shame these angles here or i can just use glue i think i'm going to do that i'm going to glue here at the edge and then push everything back here is this the normal glue that i ooh, okay usually i'm using well there was an air bubble so let's carefully 
put it upon the edge only the top section you don't need to get everything in under the glue so only this thing here and then i'm going to fold it back and hope that it sticks if not then i'm going to cut it off anyway unfortunately no success so cutting out everything is the only solution for now but really this depends on the material that you're using this time it doesn't work but i've made different DIYs where it worked perfectly with okay now you can be put away now you can start painting the lids um of both of the uh DIYs oh i see some not so clean cut edges and i have a really dirty pair of scissors here but i'll be cleaning that up later look this is number one really cool really farmhouse really easy to do if you have this file or maybe you can download a printable from the internet and put that one on um i don't need the glue right now okay the lids let me see let's put them together so i know where i need to paint i'll be using this chalk paint or chalk what is it actually? School board paint. Blackboard paint. Okay, it's guess, getting a little bit sticky on top. This is really cool stuff that Jenny and I have been using for a long time. But first, it doesn't have to be super clean because I'm going to cover it up with uh, the line with, I think it will be twine. So don't worry if you go a little bit over the line. Really, twine is such a good thing to cover up ugly edges. Okay, so paint the lids black and then when everything is dry, I will be back. Okay, the black painting has been done. I painted both of the lids black and here around the edges, I also painted everything black. So that's a nice even color. Now, I want this one to be white. So therefore, I'm using the Construction Market white paint that Jenny and I use a lot. Uh, where did I? Oh, here it is. I was always looking for my brush. I'm going to paint everything white here. I don't, I'm not going to be very precise here on this line. As I said, I'm going to use twine um, to cover this up and make it more smooth. So you don't have to be really precise. You don't have to tape around it. I'm just going to paint roughly now and uh, yeah, cover those edges up. That's where I used twine a lot. I didn't expect it, but I need a second layer. Normally this paint with one layer is enough, but I think because the wood soaks it up so quickly uh, that the second layer is better for more coverage. By the way, at the new attic, there is one advantage. It is super warm in here, so the paint dries really, really quickly. It is, let me check the thermometer, 32 degrees here right now. I have no idea how much Fahrenheit that is. Um, you can look it up, of course, on the internet, but this was dry in, I believe, less than five minutes. Now I'm going to let it dry and then we'll be moving over to the next step. Uh, time to move over to the next step and I have made some really cute printables. I tried to make them in the same style, just with, uh, yeah, Photoshop actually. I'm going to cut these out and then I'll be gluing these two upon here. I think I put the... Uh, red one upon here and the black one upon there or maybe just not maybe just leave this one black and white and this with the red We'll see what looks good. Okay, they've been cut out. What do you prefer? I think this looks cool, but it is up to you. You can of course also easily swap them um, Yeah, it is really up to you now. I'm looking at this. I don't find this ugly. I, I, yeah, I think I'm going to do it like this yeah, I'll just do it like this. Now, this one has a little bit of brown color and this one has a red color. I'm going to do it like this. Well, let's grab our glue again. I need to shake it a little bit because it's pretty warm in here. Last time I forgot to shake it and the glue really got messed up. Okay, trying not to put too much glue on. First, let me try this. And you can always, of course, add some more. Now, grab my brush and just divide the glue hold the image well because I have that once that it starts shaking around and then the glue will be in the front part of your image and that is not what you want especially that goes easy on me when having small images to work with okay now I'm going to use the grid upon this mat again to 
like the center and I think it will look cool here because I still want to have some more ornaments up there I'm going to gently brush the air underneath of it with the clean brush trying not to press it hard because the ink from the printer still might be a little bit wet just like this do it upon the same side or up on the other side the same thing okay they are done with the print now this time I take some twine and I'm going to wrap it around this edge here just like this uh, I think I'm only leaving it to a small part um, maybe I don't even need the hot glue gun first I'm going to look at what I want wrapping it around and gluing it together or that I want to have a small bowl here just a really simple one um, I'll be back soon and show you what I want to do okay I think that I know what I want first let me glue some hot glue here from the edges where the uh, stripe from the paint and the wood meet each other I'm going to quickly toss this one around at the edge and press it here against the sides where the glue is still hot then taking this one back forth the other one too and now I think I'm just going to make a simple knot just around here pull and just make a small loop first try to make it as small as you can around and then just pull this tight and here are my scissors I'm going to cut it up first okay this is way too long just like so oh my hot glue is dripping up on the table now I'm going to rearrange until I'm happy with the the size of the loops and that's I'm, I'm going to do the other one as well I think this looks cute here and then cut it off wherever you want it to cut and hold it here see that the length will be this that is a really simple thing to cover up your painted edge and I want to have the look with this one on well some sort of the same height as the other one so just you know put them on the other side um, let me cut off the edges or the ends actually of the loops okay now I hope they stay in place if not please don't worry just use your hot glue gun to put them into the right position because this looks pretty weird yeah I think just some small tips of glue oh this one is too long make them in the same length or not if you prefer that um, I'm going to arrange how and where I want to have the ends of my twine and I'm simply going to put a tiny lot of glue on the back of the twine oh you can't see it properly I'm going to push it into the place where I want it and just hold it for a few seconds I'll do it with the end of my scissors because that keeps it cool well you can also just not use the end but simply here in the middle section because then you can make it you know more of a 3d effect a little bit too much glue underneath there just wiped it away and you can do the same thing with the hoops as well but that is really up to you i think this one looks just perfect i'm going to uh, arrange the other one and now i'll be back to finish the whole thing up i always like to add this part of the christmas greenery and i'm just going to hot glue it i think here a little bit underneath the twine that's why i'm not glued it upon the front because you can tuck it in underneath and that gives a really cool effect um so i'm going to pour just a big dot of glue here Oh, I need an extra glue stick soon, I think. Lift it up, and then now I have shaky fingers, so now it won't go very well. Just put your part of greenery underneath there. Now you can add an extra branch, for example, here on that side, or just leave it that way. 
I also personally like to add some berries. Well, let's see here. Just do whatever you like. You can do so many things with this. And then this is what you can get. You can, of course, always add some more green or less or no berries or different berries. Just decorate them. This is just an idea how I like it. So these they are two really cute and easy to make maison jars. You can totally style them how you like it. And uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section which one is your favorite. Thank you for watching and we hope you had fun. So that was it for today. Jenny and I hope you had fun watching and we hope to see you back again in our next video. Take care. Bye everyone. Bye.